monstrous shark.
your face.
kind of fool you take me for? You know too much. You both.
Great bullets with black rifle. <laughs> so now he's buzzer fire, huh? Nope. He best black. Black and dead? Good riddance. Only wounded. They say this hair strap didn't aim to kill. And maybe with good reason. You reckon like I told you, Dead would have a scar on his hand, here? Yes. So is this hair strap. Great man, Jonah! You mean? I mean he might be our man. More or less. Simply less, and more than more or less. Where's this Harris chap now? He rode out to the Western Pass with Wild Bill Haycock. Wild Bill back in Deadwood. I told that young person to stay out of my territory. He's more trouble than a two headed mother in law. Roll out the fist here, Harris chap would say. Don't you worry, I'll get one of my deputies on his trail right now. No need for that, Cheer. Wild Bill! I can be the new himself! Yeah, I'm 
talk like a real punch. I'm tired of suspending you, Dave. That cause. I mean, I should have known you would find a woman like Rose Blossom. That's okay, Bill. You had cause. Good cause. Now I got something to tell you. Stick them all, man! <laughs> now listen real careful. You are dead wood! No way! But I pretended to be him yesterday. Twas me that held up the shy coach. Twas me that stole Rose Blossom. Nay, you stick the needles in my ears. <laughs> I seen her sitting there at that station in Custer City. My blood burned. I knew I had to have her for my own. Fair means of foul. <laughs> <laughs> Black mask and black hat on. Looking good. So they put the blame on you. Then I took it to this cabin I got down at Painted Gulch. Nay, she's an innocent young creature. <coughs> you hear me wrong. I didn't harm a hair of her head. To me, she's like an angel. I ain't to marry her once she cools down and gives her consent. <laughs> Try from the arms of Miss Lily. I know, and I was right sorry when I learned Lily were blind. So I come running back here to Deadwood and find that dual flag in red. I'm going to take it back to be the painted coach, but then you come along and interfere. And now that you know, I'll take it. No, no, Nate, you can't do that. That's compounding your felony. Still two gals and not one? <coughs> You're right. You're right. Twas a mad rash act. And I regret it deeply. I'll go fetch Rose. And I'll go with you. Wait! Here comes the sheriff! Nate, you can't be seen. He's got a warrant for your arrest. Well, I'm not that much dick. He's <coughs> got a warrant for Ned Harris. Here, sneak out the back door and go to my place. I'll bet Drew Buck. <laughs> Ain't got you say? You know, you know, Bill, you're right. Maybe I'm best not <laughs> love. Because how dead would dead would be? If dead would, would be dead. <laughs> Understand, Mrs. Helpless. Lammy was 
time? A man who was the cause of it all. A man? More or less. Simply less, or more than more or less. <laughs> she put her trust in him. He wrote her. Left her with the child. Set her adrift to make her own way in the world. Homeless, friendless, she learned to fight tooth and claw. You say she had a child? That's what the letter's about. Boarded the little gal with some folks in Cheyenne. Now she's got word the little tack is dead. That's why she weeps and won't be spears. Oh, Judge, I'm so ashamed. No one blames you for your high principles. Oh, if you only knew what a miserable hypocrite I am. Worse than Clancy Jane. Far worse. For I've concealed my shame. What are you saying? Ask Calamity to come hither. I have an apology to render. Hey, Gladys. This long last request, and you join us. But I got nothing to say to her. Oh, but I have much to say to you. Judge, will you excuse us, please? Why, sir? I know you should be in. Real comfort, Calamity. Calamity. I have a confession to make. I too was done in by a foul wretch, unfit to walk erect and bear the name of man. What name did he bear? The name I have not breathed in years. Prairie Blossom. Prairie Blossom? Do you know it? Fortunate for you, he was a beat himself, and I was just a young, innocent girl. Speak on. This touches me closely. Does your husband know? Homer knows nothing. And I beg you not to tell him. He thinks I came to him unspoiled. For years now I've borne guilt like a devouring cancer in my soul. For you see, unlike you, I abandoned my child. Abandoned a baby? Yes, in desperation. When I learned the man who wronged me had a wife, I left her on the altar of a church in Cheyenne, a beautiful, bouncing girl. Who picked her up? I do not know. Time and again, I go back seeking some trace. Now you'll know the purpose of my visits. Found no trace? Well, what was the child's name? She had no name. I called her Little Pet, but I've known her anywhere, anywhere in the world, for you see, she was. Oh, I cannot go on. Blind? No, not blind. Far worse, branded, and by her own father, curse his evil soul. One night, he came home intoxicated. Now you'll know why I shudder at the very name of intemperance. In his drunken fury, he dragged my baby from her bed, picked up a red hot poker, and branded the child. Oh, horrible sight. Oh, I can see it now. A map, the location of a secret gold mine, burning streaks of flame on the child's back. Stay here, Miss Loveless. Oh, your husband comes. Oh, merciful heavens! You will keep my secret? I swear. Oh, my! There you are. Welcome home. Did you have a pleasant visit? Yes, Homer. But it's nice to be back after the hurly-burly of Cheyenne. Shall we go? I'm afraid I overstepped Calamity's hospitality. Just one minute. I got a little beer I didn't have a chance to look at. Looks like it might be important. Let's just set a while about that room's contents. That's curious. Another enveloper inside. <laughs> You know, it's just a sign of friend. It says, Dear Sher, perhaps you would like to know why your wife Molly has been making so many trips to Cheyenne. She has a deep, dark secret, evidence concerning which is enclosed. Read and act accordingly, a friend. Molly, what's this talking about? I do not know. Well, great, great Grandma Jonah. We'll soon find out. Wait, Sher, do not open that missive. Why not? Oh, because I got a feeling of foreboding. <laughs> Do you not trust your wife? But of course I trust her. Then prove to her your trust and let her read it. All right, Molly, <coughs> you read it. Out loud. Thank you. We're waiting, Molly. Uh, I can't. Oh, here, let me read it. Seven years ago, the, the woman, known as Calamity Jane, gave secret birth to a child. In order to hide her shame, the gal, whose name was Lola, was abandoned on the church altar in Cheyenne. There, your wife goes on regular visits, seeking some trace of the child, upon Calamity Jane's behalf. That's all. Bless you. God bless you. Boy, don't touch that wicked woman. Mother of child shame. What you have done was ill-advised. 
but I know your generous heart, so I forgive you for it. But I forbid you to ever again speak to this creature. Calamity Jane's not fit to lace your boots. She has committed the impartial sin. Do that after intermission. Okay, go ahead, go through it.
she's upside and sleeping. She'll be down a little later. Hey, Bill, come over here. Angel. Yeah, she don't give you two plays, guys, but you do you? Is that an insult? Nope. This is what I use for insult. Okay. Have a chair. <laughs>
Want to know what it is, boys? Yeah! She can kiss, and I reckon she can kiss mighty sweet, too. Look at that honey charm of hers. Ain't that something to make you bees buzz? Buzz, 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 just to be with you. Good. Now, which one of you insects wants to explore this hive first? We we auction her off! That's the way you want it, that's the way it'll be. I'll be auctioneer. <laughs> what about Big Jess? One kiss from these pretty lips. Never slow by a coarse mustache. No, Jess, no! Please, I'll just die, Jess! 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 Bit's too low. <laughs> Ah, uh -huh. 
no harm. No harm? Tearing me from the arms of my helpless sister to carry me off to a cabin and paint a goat? No harm indeed. But I was tempted by your flaming beauty. Alas, it has always been my curse. But I have been more plain. And I love you, Miss Rose. She told me so. She wants you for his wife. He has no wife. The bride of an outlaw indeed. Step. True, he did me no injury. He was a gentleman at all times. He even took off his hat when he kissed me. He kissed you! Dirty dog, I'll salivate Your age is unjustified, Mr. Williams. He kissed me, and I liked it. It was a tender kiss, more like that of a brother than an outlaw. I soothed away my fears. Poor Ned kidnapping you. I told me she'd have been so impetuous. Yes, if we had met under happier circumstances. The seed of interest might have been planted to germinate quickly, from which would have grown the sprout of admiration. And then, the stock of love. But no, he chose to reap before he had sown. Enough of this. Take me to look. Then you best wait here, Miss Rose. I'll fetch her. She's been in that Amari love assist. A good woman, I hope. Oh, she's the best. Wife of the sheriff. Your sister's safe enough, as you'll see in a few minutes. Just set you down and recompose yourself. I am weary from that long turn over the hill side saddle. So, Ned Harris loves me, that hot headed young scamp. And I must confess it, I was drawn to him quite uncontrollably. <laughs> His keen, yet kindly eyes. His strong, yet tender manner. A man after my own heart. Wild and free. Oh, why? Oh, why was he so premature? Ah! I hear horses approaching. They may be that room next. I best not be seen.